going to shift gears now and move to theory and evidence for another account. That moral judgments are made by psychologically processing information about the act and not necessarily persistent qualities in a person um, or their emotional displays. So this is a, a more cognitive approach to moral judgment. Prominent account um, about act-based moral judgment is from Bertram Malley and his colleagues. And they put forth this model of how we ascribe blame that relies on four principles. So first, blame is cognitive and social. So it's private on one level, a series of calculations that we're not tuned into, but it's also social and therefore public. It's part of our public lives. Blame at the private and public levels have different sources and social factors um, should be understood as separate from cognitive processes related to blame. However, in their model, social factors do constrain cognitive processes of blame. This model also goes beyond by stipulating what they believe uh, to be the function of blame. They say that blame functions to modify human behavior. It encourages people to follow the norms. It is social regulation. Third, as such, it's a judgment that makes use of humans' cognitive tools for behavior modification, which are based in social cognition. This social cognition, as we'll soon see, includes evaluating people's intentions and motivations. Finally, the model stipulates that because blame is so powerful, so high stakes, and it can damage people's lives, blame judgments typically require warrant. People demand justification for blame judgments. Warrant is a supporting reason for the attribution that indicates why a person deserves the evaluation. Mally and colleagues present, after this list of specs about their theory here, their opus, the path model of blame. And here it is laid out in its entirety. And we're gonna walk it step by step in the next several slides. Mally and colleagues note that their path model of blame, it begins at step one event detection. So the focus is on the processes that emerge due to an event or an act. Let's go down this path. I'm going to use questions to help clarify the steps down this path. So that's not meant to indicate that some explicit uh, conscious question asking process is going on. Um, it's, it's for illustration. On the path model, blame begins this process if the social perceiver detects that an event violated a norm. What was that? There was a norm-violating event. For example, a person falls to the ground. A cat screeches and bolts. A tree almost lands on a woman. A couple is in a car accident. A man screams into a phone. These are all norm violating events that might trigger someone to go down the cognitive path toward blame. This norm violating event then triggers typically implicitly assessment of agent causality. Who just made that happen? Why did that just happen? So here we're trying to trace the cause and determine did an agent, a person, or a group cause that event? At this point in the path, if no agent, person, or group is causally linked to that event, that norm violation, so for example, a tree almost lands on a woman and it's because of hurricane force winds, or a cat screeches and bolts and it's because it got its tail stuck under a rocking chair, we might feel concerned, sad, angry, worried still, but blame is not relevant because there is not a causal agent that can take that blame. There's no target for it. If agent causality is established, however, 
the perceiver judges whether that agent brought about that event intentionally. So moving from agent causality to assessment of intentionality. In essence, this step represents that question. Okay, they did it, but did they mean to do that? Once this judgment is made, this then leads to two different information, information processing paths um, to blame. Say the answer is yes, that causal agent is judged to have acted intentionally to bring about that norm violating event. In this case, the perceiver considers the agent's reason for acting. All right, why did they do it? Did they have a good reason to intentionally cause that to happen? Here's where we consider justifications or exculpating factors. Blame is then allocated based on the consideration of whether the act was justified. Was this justified? Minimal blame is assigned if the agent was justified in acting this way and maximal blame if the agent was not justified. So intentional causation of a norm violating event um, that is not backed up by good reasons. That's how you get a lot of blame. So say an agent is judged to have brought about the event unintentionally. It was an accident. So we're going to go um, off to the right there. No, it wasn't intentional. Here, the perceiver then considers whether the agent had an obligation to prevent that norm violating event. So here the question, well, okay, it wasn't intentional. Could it have been prevented is considered. If not, low degrees of blame or no blame is allocated to that individual. So if a person accidentally caused a norm violating event and had no obligation to prevent that event, they're likely to be assigned low or no blame in the path model. If the person unintentionally accidentally caused a norm violating event and did have an obligation to not cause that norm violating event, then there the model says that people will consider typically capacity. Did they have the capacity to actually fulfill their obligation to prevent that norm violating event? Now, if they didn't, uh, for some reason, like they were physically um, not able to meet that obligation, then they're likely to be assigned low or no blame, or if they're prevented or forced from fulfilling their obligation. If they did have the capacity to fulfill their obligation, and even though they didn't mean to, they caused a norm violation, in this model, people are likely to still ascribe some degree of blame 